friends, uh, this is Nikita Dehia from the ECS Exponent Consultancy Services. Today in our series of ECS 10 series with stalwarts, we have a phenomenal stalwart with, her, with us. Um, a very good friend of mine who has worked in plethora of fields and worked in some of the most important organization that further Indo-German bilateral trade. It's my very uh, proud privilege to welcome Akim Rodewald, a German, but whose heart is in India. He lives in India. So this is going to be a conversation with Akim Rodewald under the series of ECS 10 series with Stalwarts. Akim, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, Nikita. And uh, yeah, thank you also for this uh, nice invitation. It's an honor to be um, recognized as a stalwart, though I don't really feel like it, but we'll make now the best out of it. <laughs> I can, uh, you have worked in some of the most um, important uh, organizations like IGCC, you have worked with GIZ, uh, you have hosted many, many German and European delegations that have come to India. And as a German uh, and married to a beautiful Indian woman, you are living in India. Please tell us the importance of study in Germany for an Indian student from a German perspective. Well, uh, yes, uh, what, what I feel is very important and I what actually I brought with me to India from Germany when I came about uh, 20 years back um, is, is the knowledge about all these kind of alternative ideas with regard to science. So, of course, we need that knowledge. We need that Scientology knowledge. We need that science knowledge. But even more important, what we need is how do we apply it today? Uh, because that is very important because we cannot solve today's problem with yesterday's science. So science is also something that is, uh, that is undergoing evolution and, and we need this evolution within the sciences as well to actually solve the problems of today and uh, tomorrow. And uh, this is something um, that I'm pretty sure you can learn at German universities, uh, not only when it comes to science, also when it comes to uh, humanities, when it also comes to business, you can learn how to apply uh, those things to solve problems of today. Uh, and that I think is uh, very important. So just repeating what you learned from your professor and um, making a good exam, will not be enough uh, for you to actually um, yeah, master the challenges that uh, today and the future will keep in store for you. So that's why studying in Germany definitely is a very good alternative because that's exactly what you can learn there. Wonderful, new age solutions for new age problems. So we are tackling uh, today's uh, problems with today's solutions and I love the aspect what you mentioned about that science is also evolving so the students will get hands-on experience on the latest so that's that's a wonderful takeaway for uh, our viewers the second uh, the second uh, question that absolutely pops up from the from the uh, inputs that you've shared with us Akim is that uh, there are a set of students who are very much interested in studying in Germany, but then they are wanting to come back to India. They're wanting to come back to the roots either because they have family or um, they want to be an expert here in India. What, according to you, from the German perspective, are the opportunities for such students? Well, of course, there are opportunities, but probably not as many as we think there are. Um, whatever you learn and whatever you study and whatever you want to apply back in India, um, you should know that whatever you study along the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, will be of a tremendous importance for India today, because this is where India needs the most support. Of course, you find a lot of businessmen and they want to do business. Business is fine, yeah, but 
just business is not enough for India to develop into a um, progressive and, and uh, industrialized nation. So what we need is uh, this kind of knowledge to be what, what you learn in Germany, to be applied in India. And of course, tackling the Indian challenges, not the German ones, but the Indian challenges. And the, all those Indians who want to come back uh, after having studied in um, Germany, um, of course, they, they will meet the tremendous opportunities. Uh, however, these opportunities are not coming ready-made. So you will have to work on that opportunity. You have to kind of form this opportunity for yourself. You have to um, get back to India. You have to make connections. You have to talk to people. You have to talk to the decision makers within companies, uh, within government. Um, but you need that expertise. And when you come back with that expertise and uh, you still can connect very well um, to your uh, the Indian partners, I think this is uh, the winning solutions. And uh, that way you can actually carve that niche that you are looking for, uh, for yourself. You can carve that uh, within India and uh, just um, try and implement what you have learned. Uh, of course, applying it to Indian terms and conditions and with the support of Indians. So one of the problems that I, being a German in India, face uh, from time to time is that, of course, they come to me and tell me, ah, it's all very nice, the German solutions, great technology and great, yeah, you Germans can do it, but we Indians cannot, yeah. And I'm the wrong person to convince them because I am not an Indian, because I'm still considered to be a German. And by passport, I am a German. But when you come back, having studied uh, and being an Indian and convince your fellow Indians that it's going to work, um, I think you have the much better cards than I do uh, have in India. Um, there are also certain programs that probably could help you if you want to return to India. Uh, for example, GIZ has this program of returning experts. So returning studied, experts. Returning okay. experts. You have studied in Germany. You have probably also worked for a couple of years in Germany. But then you feel now my future is in India uh, and uh, you want to come back. Uh, you can um, uh, contact uh, GIZ. Of course, the program is also kind of restricted. Not every Indian student can do it like this. But uh, for those who have studied, uh, let's say, along the value chain of the SDGs, be it uh, humanities, be it sciences, um, also be it uh, business development, um, there are chances that you may have the possibility to come back with a more or less kind of German compensation, but working for an Indian uh, organization in India. At least That's, for some time, for some time, uh, GIZ can support you. I think that's a, that's a wonderful piece of input that um, Indians have more advantage and opportunity when they have studied in Germany for them to work in India also because there are thousands of German companies. We do not know the exact number, but it can range anywhere from 7,500 to 12,000. Uh, these German companies have a presence in India, whether it's a short-term, medium-term, or a long-term presence, and they would be more than happy to have um, Indian students who have studied in Germany, right, uh, Akim, from what you are saying. That's, that's true, especially when you look into the small and medium-sized German uh, companies, which are also the majority of companies in Germany and also uh, in India. Um, then, and especially if you as a student have learned German language, which of course for them would be an added uh, advantage, um, then you do not even only have the opportunities within Indian companies who are looking for that kind of expertise you are coming back with, but you also can probably join a German company in India and uh, still be in touch with a German kind of uh, 
um, uh, work attitudes uh, that you may have experienced in Germany as well. Though I have to say that many German companies uh, still prefer to adapt to Indian terms and conditions, especially when they look into a long term kind of engagement uh, within India, because um, in the end you are in India and it is the Indian spirit. Um, mm -hmm. You can, of course, influence with your German expertise to a certain extent, but uh, it should never be um, the case that uh, let's say the German kind of attitude dominates in India that will not work for long. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, Kim, I have known you for, uh, it's going to be 16, 17 years that I've known you. And in that span of time, I have seen you roll up your sleeves and work very extensively in the field of renewable sustainability. Uh, can you please throw some light on the opportunities like green initiative, smart city. You've worked in such a huge plethora of field and friends, it's, it's an absolutely proud privilege to have Akim talking to us. So can you please throw some light on, on these fields and the opportunities that they present for students who have studied in Germany? Yeah, so especially uh, with regard to renewable energy, there are ample opportunities within India because India is uh, uh, has set sails uh, with regard to solar photovoltaic and whoever comes back with that kind of knowledge. Um, obviously, uh, you, you can't do anything wrong in this field more or less today because that is really where India is looking for experts. Um, who can and so implement. and sun is in abundance in India. I mean, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so yeah, and, that's and what eventually mean. India also wants to step out of uh, uh, the fossil fuels. Though this is in the future, which probably uh, at least I may not <laughs> experience, but uh, still, it, it it is the goal even of the current uh, government to to work at least on the path of stepping out of fossil fuels. Because uh, as it is today in India, as we speak, actually solar power in certain areas is uh, much cheaper and in some areas even half the price as uh, coal fired energy. Um, so uh, from that point of view, the fossil fuels have become actually uneconomical um, because solar is has become so cheap. Uh, and um, I, uh, actually, I don't want to use the word cheap because power always has a value. Uh, and and uh, um, but I mean, the value of fossil fuels actually is increasing uh, against the value of uh, renewable energies, especially uh, when it comes to photovoltaics in India. So and uh, this is certainly a development uh, one should take advantage. There are still programs um, which are run by um, Indian companies, for example, like EESL, where they look uh, into um, uh, uh, housetop roofs, uh, uh, rooftop uh, solar plants, so, sorry, rooftop solar plants. Um, you can get uh, these things partly financed if you are in a position to deliver. Um, of course, these are all tenders you will have to apply for. But uh, if you have that kind of entrepreneurial spirit and uh, I mean, being an Indian, you know that these processes can be slightly uh, difficult. Um, however, they can also turn out to be very fruitful. And um, uh, these are opportunities you may not want to let go if you come back having studied solar PV in Germany. But also when it comes to energy efficiency or also to sustainability, um, um, if you have studied in Germany, you may know that uh, the German law actually demands uh, from its companies to look into their supply chain. Uh, so they also, the German companies need to make sure that their supply chain also works on a sustainable level. Um, so all these uh, cases where you get uh, t-shirts manufactured by children or uh, mining products uh, that have been mined by children or uh, clothes that have been manufactured by um, girls who hardly get any break and things like this. Uh, probably you know all these stories from India. 
Um, this will not be accepted in future um, by the German government and if a German company uh, will be found knowing about it and not doing something about it, they will be fined and no German company likes to be fined. So hence uh, this pressure will also come back to India um, yeah, to, for the German companies to clean up their supply chains. So of course, a lot of effort has already been done, especially when it comes to the textile industry, but there are still areas where we can do better and uh, uh, also uh, yeah, manage to get this kind of humanity into the workforce um, that um, um, we are used to in Germany and uh, that kind of respect for human labor um, that we want to see in Germany as well. Akim, you have spoken about um, renewables, solar, um, you have spoken about energy efficiency, but I know you have other extensive uh, work uh, that you have done in the fields and I, uh, it would be really nice if you can throw um, light on green initiative, smart city, biogas, and waste management, because those are really big fields, emerging fields, a lot of options for students, and um, no better person than you to throw light on them. Yeah, so of course, uh, when we talk about energy efficiency, this is actually pretty hard work because you have to go into the companies you have to work with them on their energy consumption. You have to find out where they can reduce their energy consumption without uh, compromising on the quality of the product or the service they are uh, generating with this energy. Um, but there are still a lot of ways uh, in how you can do that. And if you have studied that in Germany, you surely will know how to approach uh, uh, these um, challenges. And especially in energy efficiency, there are what we call some low, very low hanging fruits where with very simple measures and they do not even cost the world if they cost at all. With very simple measures, especially regarding the behavior of employees, um, you can uh, work wonders in saving energy and hence also energy costs. So that's um, green it, initiative. Yeah, so this, this could be a green initiative. It, it's in, uh, energy, it goes into the field of energy efficiency. Um, in, in fact, even smart cities is a kind of green initiative um, because uh, with the smart cities uh, that India has uh, embarked uh, on this journey, uh, I think it was 2017 uh, when they started uh, these 100 plus smart cities in India. Um, we, or the, the cities are supposed to bring in um, processes that make the cities more green, more clean, um, that are processes concerning um, uh, energy, um, uh, water, wastewater, waste uh, disposal, and, and how we work with waste. So um, when, when we talk about water, wastewater, waste, these are already huge fields where there is so much work to be done in India. I mean, if you if you look at the, for example, the um, um, uh, how are they called the, the ETPs, um, yeah. So hardly one of them works properly. Yeah. So within India, I mean, I'm not pointing at one region, but. Uh, um, all these uh, water treatment plants uh, that are uh, act actively working in India, more or less none of them is working properly. So there is huge demand for clean water and the wastewater can be turned into clean water. And um, due to the climate change, even India will face water shortages, not now, but... It's already future. started. It's already started. Ne? So when all the glaciers uh, stop melting, twenty-one then... cities in India are running out of water. Twenty-one. So yeah. And 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 this is really interesting because Germany's um, Germany is a pioneer in um, waste management. So even if you go to a normal bus stop or a normal uh, railway station, there are four different kinds of um, trash bins. Um, so it would be really interesting for a student to study 
the waste management by itself. Um, water is a, another big field, but just waste, you know, whether it's wet yeah. waste, bio. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you, you also have started in India uh, the program of cleaning the Ganges, mm -hmm. uh, the Holy River in India. And along the Ganges, so currently a lot of biogas plants are coming up because uh, all the sludge that comes from the water treatment plants um, is actually uh, organic waste and you can use it in biogas plants and with biogas you can generate power, you can also generate cooking gas. So there is uh, a lot of applications, uh, uh, there are a lot of applications that you can use biogas for and uh, especially in the areas uh, along the Ganges, um, also the power situation is not the very best. Uh, so from that point of view, actually, you can actually catch a lot of problems with one solution that you implement uh, here. So cleaning the Ganges, uh, and, uh, I mean, and, and using the sludge to generate power. I mean, we have to learn that waste is not waste, but waste is a resource. resource and yeah. It's a very valuable resource, especially in India, as uh, the Indian waste is very high on organic content. Uh, and hence, um, uh, whatever can transform this organic content into uh, um, a sustainable solution like power generation or cooking gas, um, this is uh, should be a very, very welcome solution for India. And if, if you have studied along these lines, you can make a lot of villages happy because suddenly they get power, suddenly they get a cooking gas which is not kerosene and and killed the people because of the smell of the kerosene and the fumes that uh, it uh, uh, it generates so all these solutions um if you want to say so quite simple solutions but they need to be implemented and they can be implemented because they are also not costing the world today um, and um, this is something where actually you coming back to India, having that kind of knowledge can make a huge impact. But as I said, um, let's say this program for cleaning the Ganges is just one program. There may be others uh, and there should be more, but you also have to work towards getting more of these programs so that you can actually show the kind of expertise that you are coming back with. Thank you, Akim, for throwing light on very, very vital topics. And each of these topics, if we speak for hours together, they are so big by itself, whether it's green That's initiative true. or smart city, biogas, uh, waste management, water, water treatment, and so much more. So it's um, I know you have so much um, inputs and you've touched very valuable topics. Um, now, how about you have known um, me um, as a person, we were colleagues first and then friends, and you know the kind of work that we do at ECS, which is customized solutions for all our students, whether they are in arts um, or whether they are in uh, engineering or waste management. Would you like to say a few words on the kind and the quality of work that we are doing at ECS and that I'm doing? Um, yeah, I mean, since I have a daughter at, uh, um, in, in the age of becoming a student very soon, of course, I look much more closely to the services that you offer than uh, probably uh, other people may do who do not have children in this age group. Uh, but I do. And uh, um, to be very honest, I found your work um, very, very detailed. The kind of knowledge you have about German universities I don't have, though I am a German, um, but also the details on how to uh, apply for scholarship programs, how to probably even secure these kind of scholarship pro uh, programs uh, and, and this scholarship uh, then for your students. Um, this is simply amazing and I would not know any second kind of person or company um, going into that kind of deep detail that you um, go into and uh, always finding the right solution for what your students are passionate about. And this actually for me is also the winning combination for India uh, in the end, because 
you are the passionate student, you follow your passion in studying exactly what you are passionate about, and then you bring back that passion and that knowledge and that application to India. And this is, in my opinion, the winning combination that you need to be successful in India. And um, yeah, we know, of course, a lot of Indian companies, we know many companies also struggle, especially in the beginning. But when you really make it, yeah, you look at uh, even German companies that are quite, have become quite big in India, they are probably more successful in India than they are in Germany. You look at Indian companies, uh, what kind of uh, portfolios on, on products and services they offer. Um, this is, these are kind of opportunities you will not find in Germany so easily. Um, in brackets, why do you think I am in India? Hmm? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, from, from that point of view, um, yeah, there are opportunities, but you will have to work hard to really dig them out and make them the opportunities you want to step into. Thank you, Akim, for also giving the right advice to uh, the ECS viewers that whatever they are passionate about, they should go go ahead with that. And you have very beautifully elaborated that there are opportunities for Indian students who have studied in Germany. So they have, of course, a lot of opportunities in Germany, but also in India, whether they wish to do a job or they wish to join their family business or to start to have a new startup. So you have thrown light on all of these. And, and that's really, um, that's really, really wonderful. So friends, uh, here we had um, Akim, who not just spoke about um, the various opportunities that Indian students have, but he has also touched very, very important new age business areas. So there is, if you want to be successful, that's what he's saying, be in the field that you're very passionate about and success will follow you. The kind of opportunities that you will have for your study in Germany, which is international education, quality education, yet debt-free education could be as follows. You So in Germany, at the German universities, there is no one field and that's replicated at all the universities. You can study very unique fields like renewable energy and e-mobility. It's called the REAM program, or you could study uh, sustainable renewable energy technologies or you can study energy systems and renewable energies, or you can do an MBA in renewables. I mean, how exciting is that, right? Or you could study, focus your attention towards environment and energy. So whatever that your focus is and whichever way you want to proportionate your passion to, there is a program that exists for you in Germany. To go further, you could be also doing building sustainability. You are wanting to get into sustainability, but you do not know where to start from. Uh, you can choose the program that's called building sustainability, that's methods for energy efficiency, or you can study he, Akim spoke about photovoltaics. You can study an entire master's program on photovoltaics engineering science. Or he's also spoken about water resources. You can be studying integrated water resource management, coastal water management, and so much more. And the good news is, friends, that 12 plus 3, if you have done 12 plus 3 in India, vis-a-vis um, -vis as 12 plus 4. So if you're from an engineering background, yes, 12 plus 4 is required. But if you come from a sciences background, if you have studied 12 plus 3, that's respected and accepted at the German universities. And there are so many uh, ways and channels that you can tune your passion to for the right kind of uh, study program in Germany in English. So uh, these are so many options. Thank you very much, Akim, for your very precious time. Uh, he's, he's a renowned scientist in the, in the world of Indo-German bilateral trade. He lives in India, but he also travels very often to Germany and has worked extensively in all of these fields. So thank you very much, Akim. It was great connecting to you, interacting with you under the ECS STEM series with Stalwarts. Um, we wish you a very good evening ahead. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Nikita, for the, um, having the opportunity to talk to your students. And 
Yeah, as we are old friends, uh, I always uh, tell you when they, whenever you have questions or your students have questions um, before they start uh, their studies in Germany, you are most welcome to also um, forward these questions to me if you can help answering it. Wonderful. So. And you can write it to us at queries at the rate exponentconsultants.com. I repeat queries at the rate exponentconsultants.com. Send in your resume, your academic resume and your list of questions. Do not just type in I need information that doesn't work. Send in your academic resume and your specific questions. All emails are answered in one working day. And if there are specific questions for Mr. Akim Rodewald, he, he has expressed his willingness to answer them in his field of expertise. So thank you very much, Akim. And signing out is Nikita Dedia along with Akim Rodewald. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.